Hello and welcome to the Cheers Registry Training Series. In this video, we will be covering the HVAC changeout process, or also known as the Alt-02 process. So after logging in, uh, you'll be on the main sites page, and you'll want to come over here to our site creation tool, and you'll want to select either HVAC changeout, or you can select HVAC changeout for multiple dwellings. And now HVAC changeout is for those just single family dwellings, uh, where it's just a single dwelling, um, it can have multiple HVAC systems, but it's one dwelling. Um, this will work for multifamily buildings where you're only doing a change out in a single unit. Um, you can use this form, but if you're in a multifamily building and you are replacing or changing out uh, more than one uh, dwelling, uh, then you're going to need to use this multiple dwellings option. Uh, the code does require that you complete an ALTO 2 for every dwelling uh, in a multifamily building. Uh, so this tool uh, allows you to do that quickly and easily. For the purposes of this video, we are just going to use the uh, single dwelling uh, HVAC changeout uh, model. So we'll select that and that's going to open up our ALT-02 form. So this is the CF1R ALT-02 um, and we've got that listed up here. Um, as we go down, um, we're going to just start entering information and then we'll demonstrate the, the various options um, that you have for, for different system types. So the first section is just general information. So project name, uh, you just type in, you know, whatever you want for that name. It depends on the, uh, the particular user. Some people put an address, some people put uh, their own unique number. Um, others will put in the homeowner name. Um, whatever you want to do that helps you track the project, you can put into this project name. Uh, next is going to be the site address, um, which again, as you can see as I'm, I'm typing, uh, we do provide you with um, items or addresses that closely match what you've started testing. Uh, and these are pulled from uh, U.S. Post Office listings. Um, so that may, if you find that, you select it, it'll go ahead. It's going to pull in all the information, including uh, the city, um, the zip code, uh, building department, all of that. Um, if you don't want to use one of those, then you just type in whatever you want, um, click tab or uh, click just outside that box and we'll just leave what you typed in there. Uh, now zip code, again, type in what you want, tab or click somewhere else. Um, and we're gonna automatically, based on that zip code, we're gonna populate the city and the building department. Uh, now these are just kind of our best guess based on the zip code that you provided. Um, and most of the time it's correct, but if it happens to be wrong, both of these fields are editable and you can change them if you need to. Uh, next is going to be permit number. Uh, now, because this is a CF1R, it's possible that uh, you haven't started the project yet. You haven't submitted for a permit, so you don't have a permit number. That's fine. Just leave this blank. Uh, that permit number can be added in later on site details. Uh, but if you do have that permit number, go ahead and enter that there. Uh, and then same thing for the homeowner name, phone number, and email. Uh, this is used uh, in case we need to get in contact with that homeowner for various reasons. Um, we have that contact information available. Again, if you don't have it now, uh, it can be added in the um, site details. Uh, the next item on the list here is building type. Um, now, we do just default to single family because that is the most common. Uh, but if you are working in that multifamily building and doing just a single dwelling, then go ahead and select multifamily. If that multifamily has central water heating, you'll select this option. Um, and again, if you're doing multiple dwellings in a single multifamily building, go ahead and use that other uh, HVAC change out form uh, so that you can create those uniquely over there. We'll leave this one at single family. Um, we do copy over, so as you saw at the beginning up here at the top, uh, the project name, we do take that and we copy that down here and use it as the dwelling unit name as well. Again, this is editable. You can change it if you'd like to, um, or just leave it the same. Uh, the next one here is our dwelling unit conditioned floor area. So this is just the square footage of the home that's conditioned. So you won't include any um, attached garages. And then last, the climate zone. We pull that in directly from that zip code, um, and you don't need to change that there. So that's just our, our general information. Uh, the next section, we're going to get into specific space conditioning system information. Uh, and I'll just point out up here that you'll see that in parentheses, they have SC. They are going to abbreviate space conditioning uh, throughout this form as just SC. 
SC system. Uh, so that's what they're talking about, space conditioning system, and that's your, your HVAC system. Uh, so you can see right here, SC system ID or name. So again, there's that abbreviation. Uh, so this one, we default to just a single HVAC system. Um, and we also default the name and the location to just system one and location one. Uh, you can change those uh, if you'd like to, um, but oftentimes um, system one, location one works. So you can just leave it or change it to whatever unique identifier you want. Uh, next is the condition floor area served by the system. Uh, so again, because we default to a single system, we simply pull in the value that you entered for the dwelling unit condition floor area and we put it down here. Uh, if you are working with multiple HVAC systems, then obviously um, this number is not going to be correct. And so it is editable and you can change that. What I will mention is that you do need to, with your multiple systems, you're going to have to answer this question. And so when you total those values together, they will need to equal the value that you listed here or you're going to get an error. So just make sure, for example, this one was listed as 1100. Uh, your next system is, is 1,000, you add those together, that gives you 2,100, um, and so then they will accept that value. If they don't match, uh, you will get an error. Uh, next is the six questions. So these questions are used to determine uh, if there was an alteration performed, and if so, what type of alteration. And there's a couple of different categories that we'll look at here uh, in a minute. Um, so these questions are pretty basic. Um, and you'll need to answer these uh, in the correct order um, or the, the correct number of yeses and nos in order for it to calculate. Otherwise, it's just going to show you that no alteration was performed and it's not going to allow you to, to go through the, the rest of the form. So the first question is, is it a ducted system? You know, we have two different system types. You have ducted systems and you have non-ducted system or ductless systems. So this is pretty easy. It's either going to be a yes or a no. Um, the next one is installing a refrigerant containing component. Uh, so this is anything that the refrigerant flows through. So the condenser, compressor, the line set, filter dryer, TXV, coil, um, any of those. If you are installing any of those pieces, then you would answer yes to this. Uh, the next one is installing new SC system components. Uh, so this is uh, furnaces, air handlers, coils, condensers, you know, any of those pieces of equipment, um, if you're installing new equipment, then you're going to answer yes to this question. Uh, next one is, are you installing more than 40 feet of ducts? So you're, you can only, you'll only answer yes to this question if you've also answered yes to, is it a ducted systems? If it's a non-ducted system, you're obviously not going to be installing more than 40 feet of ducts. Uh, so this is used to determine whether or not uh, the duct, duct portion of this changeout is qualified as an alteration. If all you're doing is installing 30 feet of duct and you're not doing anything else, that is considered a repair and not an alteration, and you don't have to go through the permit process. Uh, but if you are installing more than 40 feet of ducts, uh, then that is going to trigger it as a alteration. Uh, if it is a ducted system and you are installing more, more than 40 feet of ducts, are you installing an entirely new duct system? Uh, now that means that this duct system is going to meet the definition of an entirely new duct system, which means that at least 75% of the material is new and any remaining of that system is accessible to be sealed. Uh, if it meets that criteria, then you'll go ahead and select yes. And then last, are you installing an entirely new SC system? So that's equipment and ducts. If it's like a brand new cut-in where there was no system before and now you're putting in a, a ducted system, uh, then you're going to answer yes to this. Uh, if there's any parts, uh, if you're doing just an AC and duct replacement but you're leaving the original furnace, that would not be an entirely new system. Uh, so you'll answer yes or no based on what type of work you're doing. Uh, after you answer those questions, this alteration type will um, update once you've answered the questions um, answered all of the questions. Uh, if you still see no alteration performed, that means that either you've answered a question incorrectly or this is simply not considered an alteration, it's considered a repair, and therefore you don't have to pull a permit uh, to do this work. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's a, a couple of different alteration types 
And if we scroll down here to the bottom, we'll see those options that we have. So number 10 is gonna either show extension of an existing duct system, altered space conditioning system, entirely new or complete replacement duct system with or without equipment change out, or entirely new or complete replacement space conditioning system. So I'm gonna go through now and I'm going to um, pause the video really quick. I'm gonna answer the questions correctly to um, trigger each of these different scenarios and then we'll look at each of those as we go along. Okay, so I've answered two questions, yes. So is it a ducted system is yes, and installing more than 40 feet of ducts is yes. That is considered an extension of an existing duct system, and so it's going to trigger that particular section. So there's nothing else for you to do with this one. We pull in the system name and the location, and then we also are going to populate the required new duct R value based on the particular climate zone. If we go down here to the bottom, you'll see that uh, they let you know for climate zones 1 through 10, 12 and 13, it's going to be R6. And then climate zones 11 and 14 through 16, it's going to be R8. Uh, because this one is climate zone 12, we populate it with R6. And there's nothing else for you to do other than to go up and sign the document. Uh, what I will point out that's helpful oftentimes is down here at the bottom is we do display the required documentation. Uh, so you are going to need to complete the CF2R MECO1, which is pretty much for any mechanical system. Um, and then you're also going to be required to do a duct leakage test. And this is going to be a 15% threshold. So just a little bit of useful information. If you're not quite sure what test you might have to do, um, that's listed here. Um, if there's any exemptions or exceptions, those will also be listed. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back up to our questions. I'm going to pause really quick, uh, and then we'll generate that next alteration type. Okay, so the next type that we are going to demonstrate is the altered space conditioning system. So you can see that I've listed that it's a ducted system. I am installing a refrigerant containing component, and I am installing new SC system components. What I'm not doing is I'm not installing any ducts not more than 40 feet, not a new system. So these are gonna be no, no, and no. Uh, this is also a very common um, set of answers um, for just equipment change outs where the existing duct system is just left in place. So we'll go down here now to the altered space conditioning system um, and we'll cover the various information that you're gonna to need to input there. So again, we pull down the system ID and name so that you can, if there's more than one system, you can easily identify the various sections. Uh, you're gonna need to select the heating system type. Uh, now there is a quite a long list of heating systems, so make sure you review that entire list and select the uh, option that most closely matches uh, what you are gonna be installing. Uh, next is the altered heating components. Um, now we know that based on my answers that we are gonna be installing some components uh, but we didn't indicate which ones. So it could either be all new heating components, it could be a specific item uh, or, or part of that uh, heating system, or perhaps you're not altering the heating system at all. Um, all you're gonna be doing is the cooling system, and so you can select no heating component altered. Uh, now, if you select a heating component type, then it's gonna want you to list the heating efficiency type and you can select from either AFUE, COP, or HSPF. Uh, when you do that, we're then going to pull in the code minimum requirement for that particular value type, uh, and we'll list it here. Uh, now, cooling system is basically the same thing. Again, it's a long list of options for you to select from, so be sure you find the one that most closely matches what you're doing. Uh, identify either are you replacing all the cooling components, a specific cooling component, or you're not altering the cooling system. Maybe it's just a furnace replacement. Um, and then we automatically default to the SEER and a minimum value of 14, which is the code minimum. Um, that's the most typical. Uh, you can select CEER or EER, uh, but most often it's just gonna be SEER, so we, we default to that, but you can edit those if needed. A next is required thermostat type. That one is just defaulted to setback. That's the minimum code requirement. Um, and then we're gonna ask you here if there is any new or replaced duct length. Um, we know by our answers that you're not gonna be doing that, but again, you'll have to select this one here. Um, 
either greater than 40 feet, less than or equal to 40 feet, or just NA, no ducts replaced. Uh, if you were to select uh, greater than 40 feet, then again, just like we saw on the duct extension, we're going to pull in the appropriate new duct R value based on the climate zone. Uh, and again, just like uh, the other one we saw, we have all the required documentation listed down here. So we have our duct leakage test, we have our refrigerant charge if you're in an applicable climate zone, and then airflow rate for that refrigerant charge, as well as your exceptions are listed here. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is the entirely new or complete replacement duct system with or without equipment change out. So let me get that scenario set up and I'll be right back. So for that entirely new or complete replacement duct system, we are not going to be in a, doing an equipment change out. So yes, it is a ducted system. No, we're not installing refrigerant containing components or system components. We are installing more than 40 feet of ducts and we are installing an entirely new duct system. So that triggers that alteration type. So when we scroll down here now, this section is displayed and you'll see that it's very similar to the alteration type that we just saw. Again, select your heating system type. If there were any uh, heating components altered, the heating efficiency type, uh, cooling system type, any of those were altered. Um, and then again, setback. And then because this one, we know that it is having uh, ducts replaced. So that again, that value gets pulled in because we are in climate zone 12. Uh, and then down here again, required documentation, um, MECA 1, duct leakage test, fan efficacy, airflow, refrigerant charge. Again, it gives you all those uh, different requirements and any uh, caveats for those as well as ex exceptions listed there. Uh, and so our last one is our entirely new or complete replacement space conditioning system. So we'll uh, take a look at that one next. So for this one, we just answered yes to all the questions. It's a ducted system. We are doing refrigerant containing components as well as system components. More than 40 feet of ducts, which also means it's an entirely new duct system and an entirely new space conditioning system. So now we're going to trigger that last section here. It's going to look somewhat similar, but you know it doesn't have all those components that we saw on the altered and entirely new duct systems. So we are going to select that heating system type from that long list. Uh, we know that it's all new heating components, so we don't have to make those um, selections there. Again, heating efficiency type, make that selection. Cooling system type, again, it's all new. We've got our SEER, we got our 14, which is the minimum, our setback thermostat, and our required new duct value. And then finally, again, all of our required documentation, as well as any exceptions to that. So once you've filled all this information, you completed it, you're gonna to wanna to sign the document. Once you sign it, this site will be created and you'll be able to access it. Um, you'll also be able to then go in and start completing that MEC01 and those other MEC forms. Um, or if you need to get your permit, you sign this one, you print it out, take that to the building department with the rest of your materials and you submit for your permit. Uh, so that's how you start a HVAC change out uh, project in the Cheers registry. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or need assistance, please feel free to reach out to our admin support and we'd be more than happy to help. Uh, so thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.